All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Maura Bonini. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Columbia Business School. And we're thrilled to have you as we talk about um, some of our fabulous offerings on campus and go over what it's like to be a Columbia Business School student. I'm joined today by two of our living, breathing, current, fabulous students. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them to introduce themselves, um, give a little bit of an insight into what they're all about, and then we'll dive into the agenda and go from there. So, um, Michael, if you wouldn't mind starting with some introductions and just a little bit about what you're involved with on campus, um, your pre-MBA industry, what you're looking to go into, um, that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for uh, introducing me, Mara. Um, so, like Mara said, I'm Michael Strasser, and I am a second year, second year here at Columbia Business School. Uh, prior to to CBS, I went to undergrad at UNC Chapel, and then I actually joined the Air Force, the US Air Force, and was in for about seven years. Um, and then at the end of those seven years, I came directly to Columbia Business School. Um, while at Columbia Business School, uh, my first year, I actually recruited for investment banking and did an internship at Mullis this past summer. Ultimately decided that finance was not the route that I wanted to go. And now I'm actually interested in going into tech. And so I'm in the process of looking at a couple of those companies and sort of evaluating what sort of role I want to do in the tech space. Um, in terms of my involvement around campus, um, I am a member of both Clusterfew and the Veterans Club and really enjoy both clubs and affinity groups generally here at CBS are uh, a big passion of mine. I'm also a member of the Hermes Society, which is a prospective facing, uh, prospective student facing club and really enjoyed my time there. And then I'm also just part of a lot of other clubs like the wine club, for instance. So it's a, it's a good time. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Talia, I'll go ahead and turn it over you, to you if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Sure. So my name is Talia Tabet. I'm uh, originally from Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, I joined CBS as a J term and I'm a class of 2024. So I'm in my second year right now. Uh, my undergrad was in business administration back home. And uh, I moved to New York about six years ago to join our family business, which is in uh, the food manufacturing industry, uh, where I was focusing mostly on mar a marketing role. And uh, right now I'm actually recruiting to pivot into the consulting industry and um, eventually go back to my family business. Um, a quick overview of some clubs I'm part of, um, of course, the Hermes Society, uh, which is a great uh, experience. I'm also in uh, the Family Business Club, the Marketing Association, uh, Gourmet Club, um, and a few others. Uh, and I'm also on the board of my cluster, which is very fun. Amazing. Fabulous. Well, thank you both so much for sharing. Um, I'm sure we will learn more and more about all the things you chatted about as we continue with the session. Um, but just to do a quick overview of what we're going to discuss today, um, we're going to just talk a little bit about CBS at a glance, what we're all about, our Manhattanville campus, all that good info. We're then going to dive into talking a little bit about academics so you can learn a little bit more about what it's like inside the classroom at Columbia Business School. We'll talk about our New York location, um, that unmatched access you have to a variety of different industries. We'll talk about our community on campus, both um, you know, the CBS community, as well as how we connect with the larger Manhattanville, Harlem community. Um, we'll talk about some different resources that are available on campus. Um, and then we'll go dive into what I know you're all very excited to hear about, um, the admission process and what that entails, um, and the next steps as you continue to work on your application. So the first thing that I wanna go ahead and dive into is the concept of the five pillars. So our Dean, um, Dean Costis Maglores, has really highlighted these five areas as different focuses that he wants to really dive into and that you're gonna see throughout your Columbia Business School experience, right? Um, there are different courses that will incorporate these different ideas, the different clubs, activities, all will have these five pillars in their mind as they kind of navigate the Columbia Business School curriculum. Um, one area that I really like to highlight is the Powering Climate Sustainability and Energy Transformation. Um, this is an area that a lot of incoming business school students, as well as current business school students, are very focused on, right? They, you know, I always say we want to have a world for our future business leaders to lead, right? So you'll see 
as you're kind of navigating the core curriculum, your electives, as you start taking classes um, at other campuses, um, as you're doing different, you know, uh, club activities, this idea of sustainability is always going to be at the forefront. And this goes for these other areas as well. And I like to highlight these at the beginning, just so you get an idea of kind of what Columbia Business School is all about. Um, the next thing that I want to highlight quickly is our Manhattanville campus. So as many of you know, we have transitioned to our new campus um, in January of 2022 is when we moved to Manhattanville from the main campus down in Morningside Heights. We are just one subway stop away. So I'm sure Michael and Talia can speak to by the end of your Columbia Business School experience, you'll be very familiar with the one train. Um, you'll know exactly how to get all around Manhattan on the one line. Um, but we're very close by, but still are really our own campus, right? Students um, come to the Manhattanville campus. They have the opportunity to connect with each other on a much deeper level. This building was really built. Um, these two buildings were really built with the idea of connectivity, connection, and community in mind. And I'm sure Michael and Talia will speak to throughout the presentation. The idea of connection, of collaboration, is a really large component of the CBS experience. Um, and these new Manhattanville buildings um, really give students a sense of that. Um, so just wanted to plug that. Highly encourage folks to come and visit us at our new campus. Um, if that's something you're able to do, interested in doing, I always like to make the comment that right outside of our campus, um, the one train, the 125th stop is where Rihanna took her baby photo shoot. So um, it's a very famous area. I always encourage students to come um, and check that out as they come to campus. Now we are going to focus in on the academic experience at CBS. I'm talking about the curriculum, the entry points, and everything that that entails. So the first thing that I want to highlight is that we have a few different entry points for our full-time MBA students. Um, students can either begin in the January term or in the August term. So we are very lucky to have a January entering student on the call with us at this moment, Talia. So in a minute, I'll turn it over to you to give a little bit more context into what that looks like. Um, but for your information, for the context of this presentation, um, you can see that the August entry students start with the core curriculum. Um, you're taking all core classes, and then that second semester, you continue your core curriculum and take one elective. And then the summer is designated for that internship component of your CBS MBA experience. Whereas with January students, um, you don't start until that spring semester. So you take the core in that spring semester. And then instead of taking a traditional summer internship, um, you'll continue taking your core classes and electives, including block weeks during that summer semester. And then you can see starting in the fall, you're all back on track again, taking those electives together, um, and you'll graduate at the same time at the end of your second year. Um, Talia, I'd love to hear from your perspective just a little bit about maybe why you picked the January entry term um, and, you know, what that experience has been like and how have you been able to kind of, um, you know, still become a part of the CDS community as a January entering student? Sure. So a few reasons why J term. Um, I mean, now that I'm in the J term, I might have new reasons why, but the reason why I chose initially was it's a, it's in, you know, I was in New York in my family business and, you know, being able to not be away for a very long time sounded like a better idea. Um, I also at the time wasn't sure about the role of the summer internship. So mm -hmm. I took the leap on doing the shorter program that, you know, where you don't have the full summer um, necessarily free. Um, and then there's, I know it's very concentrated in terms of family business. I have a lot of people from the same background as me in my class, which I think helps a lot in terms of sharing experiences. Um, and it's a bit more international. So, you know, coming from Lebanon, it, you know, it the more <laughs> I can meet people from uh, a diverse, uh, diverse parts of the world, the, the better it is. So I think all those components um, made it like an attractive option. Um, but of course, both options are great. Um, and in terms of, did you want me to touch on the, uh, how, how you, you said how we mix with the full term maybe, or? Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, we are over 200 people in the J term. So I think it's more than enough people to, you barely have time to really get close to everyone. So 
it's not like you feel like you're missing out on anything. Um, but of course, once you get to the second year, you get you have the chance to meet everyone from all the clusters um, through your elective classes. But yeah, definitely in the first year, you're very close to your cluster and to the other clusters from your class. Um, you build very strong bonds with them. You spend most of your time with them. And actually, especially in the summer, um, it's definitely emptier on campus, but it's also a great opportunity to really strengthen um, your connections with the people from your cluster and the other two. Um, so I just found it like a great experience. It's really like a small family and it's been going very well. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And we'll talk more about the cluster system, both for August and January term students in a little bit. Um, but just to reiterate, as Talia said, um, you know, the, a big difference between this, the August and the January entry is that summer semester, right? So I just want to reiterate that for folks. It really, that is the main change. You're still going to get the opportunity to connect with your classmates, as Talia said, still have access to resources on campus. So um, as you're weighing your options for August and January, I encourage you to think about all of those things. Um, and so you can make an informed decision. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about are our faculty, right? And we at CBS have two different types of faculty members that are teaching these classes that you'll be taking. We have our tenure track faculty and our adjunct faculty. So our tenure track faculty are, and you can see some of them on this slide here, who've taught some really incredible classes over the years. These are folks who have really dedicated their life to education, right? So they are, you know, usually either retired in their field or have really contributed to the educational sphere in a meaningful way um, and are sharing about their, you know, expertise um, in these different classrooms, um, different class offerings. And then on the other side of that, that's about 50% of our faculty. We also have about 205 adjunct professors on campus. Um, and these adjunct professors are folks who are still working in their chosen field. So they may be working on Wall Street during the day and then coming up and teaching a class at CBS at night. Um, having both access to both of these really incredible faculty types on campus gives students the opportunity to learn about different fields in a really meaningful and comprehensive way, and also gives students the opportunity um, to learn about what's really going on in the workforce, right? You know, folks who are still working in investment banking, still working in, um, you know, consulting are going to have a really good understanding of what it means to be working in the field. So having both of these types of faculty on campus um, is a really be big benefit of the CBS experience. Um, Michael, I'd love to turn it over to you and ask if you wouldn't mind sharing, um, you know, a, a, a professor that you've had a really good experience with, whether they be um, an adjunct or a full-time um, tenured professor, um, what that class looks like um, and why, why they were your favorite specifically. Yeah, so, um... One of my coolest experiences on the adjunct, adjunct side was actually I took advanced corporate finance with uh, Luigi Rizzo. <clears throat> and Luigi is still at Morgan Stanley. He's like a chairman over there in the investment banking division. And the class was extremely enriching just in terms of his breadth and depth of knowledge. And he was able to bring in so many guest speakers to just chat about really interesting, cool uh, trends in the finance world. Um, but I think that my actually my favorite professor that I've had here at Columbia is uh, Professor Dan Wong, um, and he is a tenured professor, and I'm taking technology strategy with him right now. And just the way that he sort of like talks about these different trends and innovations in the tech space is so one, it's very clear and it just adds a lot of value that I personally, especially coming from a relatively non-traditional background, um, I wouldn't think about a lot of these different facets. And he's just very engaging. It's also interesting because the course is, I mean, technology is changing every single day. Right now, you know, generative AI is a huge topic. And literally in the course, part of our assignments, we get to use generative AIs, or really we have to use generative AI to see what the generative AI is doing, what the large language model is doing. And then also debate with it after we read through a case. And he's actually developed his own sort of LLM that runs off of another uh, server. But it's sort of one, building data for his own class. And two, 
giving us the opportunity to interact and learn more and debate and really refine our understanding of the cases that we're working through in the class. And it's just a really, really cool experience. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. I know Professor Dan Wong is a very popular professor, so I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying his class this semester. Um, to kind of pivot a little bit from just the faculty, we're going to talk about the different types of classes that are available to students that you'll be taking through your MBA experience. So the first is the core curriculum. So like I mentioned when I was going through the breakdown of the timelines of the MBA, the first semester, whether you enter in August or in January, is really going to be dedicated to that core curriculum. This is a foundational kind of way. It's all the foundational business classes that you'll need, right? A very fundamental, and it gives students the opportunity to get on the same foot, right? As you've seen with Michael and Talia, and as you continue to connect with students from a variety of different backgrounds, students at CBS are coming from all different types of pre-professional backgrounds, right? Some of them may be coming from a more traditional business background where some folks may be coming from an education background, right? You're not necessarily going to come in having the exact same experiences as someone else. And the core curriculum really gives you the opportunity to dive into these different areas that we know are foundational for a successful business leader. Um, and one thing that really sets our core curriculum apart is you will be navigating the core curriculum with your cluster. So when you come into CBS, you're automatically assigned to a cluster of about 50, 60 other students, and you'll be going through this core curriculum together. And even on a smaller scale, you'll be placed on a learning team, which is about 10 other students, and you're all really specifically placed to be from different professional backgrounds, right? That way, if you're going through business analytics as someone who has a significant background in that area, but there's someone else on your team who doesn't, you can be working together to kind of work through that. Um, Talia, I'd love to turn it over to you if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about the cluster system. You touched on it a little bit when talking about January entry, um, as well as sharing a little bit about your learning team um, and any kind of, you know, stories you can share about your learning team experience. Sure. So the cluster is about 70 people. Um, I think uh, CBS does a great job of mixing people from very diverse backgrounds, uh, like the country you're from, the industry you're from, the role you uh, you focus on at, uh, at your job. So it's really very um, homogenous, I would say. And you get to meet people, like you get to share experiences with from really every corner of um, the world. And um, the learning team is a subgroup of the cluster. It's about five people. Um, and again, very diverse people. So I always give this example. For example, if we had a project for our finance classes, we would have one person on the group that would be more financy and he would really help us and support us in understanding um, the areas of the project where we lack skills maybe. And then in other cases, if we had an economics project, you would have another person who has more experience in it. So really for every project we had... Um, we were using different skills, I would say. Uh, and this learning team becomes really almost like a smaller family for you. It's really like your support group. You can always go back to them. You have the WhatsApp chat with them. Anytime you have a question, um, even if it's not about the group project, you can always go back to them and get their help. And we always actually meet. We do lunches, dinners every now and then just to bond even more and make sure that even now when we're in the electives part, we just make sure that we're still close to each other because that's how we started. Um, so I think the, the concept of the cluster and learning team works really very well, especially in the beginning when you're a bit lost and you don't know where to focus. Amazing, thank you so much. I think that's a great overview of what the cluster system, the learning team looks like and gives us a good insight into the community at CBS as a whole. Um, now I'd like to talk a little bit about the electives, right? So we talked about the core curriculum, that first semester and a little bit of your second semester is really going to be dedicated to the core, making sure that you're on the same page so that you can be successful in this range of electives. So we have over 300 different electives to choose from, um, which gives you the opportunity to create a really dynamic curriculum for yourself, right? You know, at CBS, we don't have majors or tracks or 
anything specifically like that. Um, you can really dive into an area of expertise through your electives if you'd like to, but if you wanted to explore and try a variety of different classes and experience a, a variety of different areas there, you can, right? And the electives really set you up for that. Um, and so, Michael, I'd love to turn it over to you. You touched a little bit on one of the classes you're taking this semester, which is an elective, um, but are there any other electives that you've taken throughout your time at CBS that really stand out to you? Yeah, um, I think that part of the um, part of what makes the electives here so compelling is that, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can empower and increase your knowledge over whatever you want to do with your career. And so when I finished up the core um, I, and was looking at my summer in, in finance, I took a lot of classes revolving around accounting and corporate finance. So I did advanced corporate finance. I did um, basically uh, advanced accounting, um, but it was like quality, uh, quality of earnings analysis. And specifically quality of earnings analysis for me was a really interesting class. I mean, accounting can be brutal, especially if you've never done accounting before. But I took the class with uh, Professor uh, Glover, and he was really good about making it very case oriented. And so there was definitely some more technical elements and homework that we had to do. But overall, the cases really pointed out how accounting drives all of these different mechanics in, in finance. And it's sort of like the building blocks. And so that was a really interesting class and I think prepared me really well going into the summer. And that whole entire semester, I was able to pretty much fashion my course load to be very finance intensive. Fast forward to after my summer internship where I decided ultimately, you know, investment banking was kind of a fun summer, but I ultimately wanted to go a different direction. Well, now I'm in real estate classes and property technology, which is kind of like fintech for, for real estate. And I'm also in technology strategy and I'm in product management. And so I, I pretty much themed my whole semester based off of, again, revectoring to what I want to do and, and being able to learn and gain all the building blocks that I really need to succeed, both as I continue past CBS, as well as off into the, you know, my strategic career, my, my future, right? So it's it's been really cool. And I've enjoyed sort of all the different classes that we do have available here. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think that does a really good job of kind of encompassing what our curriculum is all about. Um, next, what we're going to discuss um, is our New York City location and the unmatched access that that offers. Um, this is a picture of Henry Kravis, one of our most notable alum and who one of our fabulous buildings is named after, um, as well as some of our amazing students, as you can see. So just gives you an idea of Again, what all is going on in New York City, who we have access to, what we have access to um, because of our location. Um, so these are some of those big household names for companies that you may get exposure to while at CBS, whether that be through folks coming to recruit directly on campus, um, whether that be, you know, different guest speakers coming in um, and giving a perspective on their role at Citibank or at L'Oreal, whatever that may be. There are constantly different events going on um, that highlight these different companies. Um, and it, again, being in the heart of New York City, you have access to all of these companies regardless, right? So even if you were unable to um, meet with the guest speaker from City who came in, um, they may have come and recruited and you may be able to go visit them at their, you know, at their office in, in on 34th Street, right? There's a lot of different opportunities there um, for networking, for job opportunities, um, as you connect with these various companies um, throughout your time at CBS. Um, and as I mentioned, I think the one that students take the most advantage of is different guest speakers on campus, right? Whether these be folks coming in to speak to a larger group of students in a kind of traditional guest speaker um, event on campus or coming and speaking to their class individually, right? I've heard from a lot of students that oftentimes um, folks will come and give a large lecture on campus, um, but students won't have to go because they'll have come to their class earlier in the day and they got a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time with them. Um, Talia, I'd love to kind of hear from your perspective, maybe a guest speaker that you've listened to, um, an event that you were able to go to that kind of highlighted this, um, one of these amazing guest speakers. Sure. 
So of course I attended a lot of events where that were you had very interesting guest speakers, but I think the the bigger impact is when you hear them within your classes, like you mentioned, um, because it's you know a very specific context. It's probably a class that you chose because you're passionate about. So one example I can give is uh, the food entrepreneurship class that I'm currently taking. Um, for anyone passionate about the food industry, it was almost a dream to have all those speakers come. And I think our professor, um, Professor Steven Zagor, did a great job of being able to gather all those speakers. Um, one of them was the founder of Sweet Green. Another one was um, the co-founder of the Union Square Hospitality Group, which is one of the largest group um, uh, restaurant group in New York. Um, so all of them just hearing their stories or how they founded their businesses and getting insights from the actual founders is something you couldn't have in any other context, especially if in another city. So just having one-on-one -on -one and the ability to ask them questions at the end, anything you want is honestly a gift. Um, and also in my entrepreneurship class, we had a lot of founders. And I just find that hearing founders specifically um, gives you a very special angle. It's different than having someone working at one of those companies. Um, and you just really get very inspired. And I think it's a great way of finding your aspirations for your future career. Um, even though you're not going to be in the same industry as them, it just inspires you to be your own um, entrepreneur, I would say. Amazing. Thank you so much. So I think that's a good transition. We talked about kind of the access that New York provides, different folks coming onto campus. Now let's talk about the community on campus, right? Um, a little bit about what it's like to be a student at CBS in a variety of different ways. Um, I love this picture. I just want to highlight everyone looks so happy. And I will say, as I'm walking around campus as a staff member, these are usually the faces that I see, just really smiling, laughing faces. Um, and I think that, you know, our Manhattanville campus is a big part of that. And our CBS community at large is a big part of that as well. Um, I want to start by talking a little bit about diversity, equity, and inclusion at CBS. We have a wide variety of DE&I initiatives and practices that we partake in as a campus. Um, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, is a really prominent um, office on campus that oversees different um, programming, different events um, that students can partake in. They also um, help plan the events that are, um, you know, run through the Phillips Pathway for Inclusive Leadership. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, so the PPIL is a co-curricular program on campus aimed at equipping students um, across campus with different um, opportunities to invest their time and energy into DE&I initiatives. So all students are required to go to two Phillips Pathway for Inclusive Leadership events per year, one per semester. Um, and there are a lot of different events that students will partake in that will fulfill this initiative, um, you know, ranging from the Traveling Well series. Um, there are events that are kind of focused in on more, you know, specific classes that CBS offers that are open to all students. So um, students really love taking part in the Phillips Pathway for Inclusive Leadership. Based on when I've spoken to students, they tend to go to many more than two events per year. Um, so students really do take large advantage of those different events. Um, and then the final thing I'll talk about on this slide is we are a member of the Consortium for Graduate Study and Management. Um, we're one of 23 member schools. So folks who apply through the consortium have the opportunity to be consortium fellows once they're on campus and have access to additional resources um, and different events, opportunities that help advance diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in global business um, opportunities and through MBA programs across the country. So a really great way to get involved if that's something you're interested in. And I'll talk a little bit more about applying through the consortium when we get to the application component of the presentation. Um, the next thing that I want to dive into when we're talking about the community are the different clubs, the organizations that students are able to partake in um, as CDS students. So you can see that the clubs kind of fall into four different categories. Um, we have our professional clubs. You can see those are much more kind of traditional in terms of, you know, what, how you want to get involved. You know, there's the, the real estate association, the private equity club, the media management association, right? Um, and all of these clubs have a variety of different ways you can dive more into these professional areas. 
If you know you want to go into this area, you can, of course, join these clubs, but they're also open for students who are just curious to learn more, right? And all of these clubs have opportunities for internships um, specifically available to students in these clubs. They have opportunities for networking and mentorship opportunities with alumni, other students, um, and all of the professional clubs have a Slack channel. So you can be connecting with students who are also in these clubs, who are alumni of these clubs, um, all the time so you can really dive more in depth into one of these areas. Um, and then there are, of course, the social and the leadership clubs, um, which are a little bit more on the fun side or, you know, kind of also kind of managing the student body at large. Um, I love to point out Follies under social club. Um, you know, they have a essentially a sketch comedy show every semester that's open to all students um, and very fun. I did get to go last year. It was super exciting. So I'm very excited to go to the fall semester one this semester. It's on my list of things to do. Um, and I think both Michael and Talia mentioned the other two clubs I love to reference when talking about the social club, the gourmet and the wine club. Um, so there's a lot of really fun ways to get involved and including taking advantage of the New York City location even more. Um, the leadership clubs are a great way to get involved, whether that be as a peer advisor, um, the Hermes Society, which shameless plug, we in the admission office, of course, love the Hermes Society. Both Talia and Michael are members of of the Hermes Society, so connecting with prospective students like yourselves. Um, and then finally, we have our affinity clubs. So um, the affinity clubs are a little bit more identity-based, focusing in on a specific area or identity that you may have or would like to learn more about. Um, they offer a variety of networking opportunities, um, ways to connect um, as well. So I'd love for Michael and then Talia, you touched on this a little bit about at the beginning, but if you wouldn't mind diving again into what clubs you're involved in and maybe an event from your favorite, maybe your favorite event that you've partaken in either this year or last year um, that you could share with the folks listening. Yeah. So um, like I mentioned, I'm part of the Veterans Club as well as Cluster Q. Um, and both of those clubs sort of represent identities that I hold. Um, and then I think that sort of one of the events that I really enjoyed last year for Cluster Q and that we're going to be doing again this year, it's actually an event that the admissions committee puts on and it's called Spotlight On. Uh, it's like a series and they do it for each of the identity clubs. And so I was a panelist for Cluster Q last year. And it was really cool because not only were we talking with prospective students, but we had like an active uh, or current student panel followed by a, a CBS Matters um, presentation. And CBS Matters presentations are always, one, really powerful, just to like hear your your peers talk about sort of their path to CBS and, and why they made that decision. Um, and then also we got to talk to an alum and or rather the, the, the prospective students got to talk to an alum. And that was really a, a very cool event, both to participate in as well as for the folks who were a part of it. Um, so like I said, at the affinity clubs is kind of like, that's where I put a lot of my, my effort into, but I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't talk about sort of the professional clubs a little bit. I think, um, CBS does an amazing job of preparing current students for whatever career trajectory they want to go on through the CMC, through the executives and residence program, we have coaches, we have the CMC fellows. So there's so many pillars that are really dedicated to seeing you successful and succeed in your future. But the professional clubs really, I think, kind of meet our professional acumen and marry it with sort of the culture here at Columbia, which is like, we wanna pay it forward. We're very hands-on as second years in helping our first years recruit for very structured programs, network for maybe more enterprise or less structured programs. Um, for instance, last year in the investment banking club, um, the second year has helped me. They pretty much roadmapped every single step that I needed to take in order to recruit successfully for investment banking. And then they helped me prep for my interviews. They helped me understand the technical aspects, especially as a, you know, as a former military uh, member. And then ultimately, once it got to interview day, you know, and we had all of our offers, they gave us a lot of really valuable insight on how to manage those offers and working with the CMC to do so. So I think that that's just one really great aspect of C CBS. And it's not just about your professional future, but about making an a lasting network. And we do that through this sort of pay it forward mentality. I can go ahead. So um, in my case, actually, um, 
the I would say leadership uh, position that I dedicate most of my time for is actually the cluster board. Um, I'm the social rep for my cluster, which takes a lot of effort. Um, I am responsible for basically with another social rep to organize all the events, uh, make sure that our cluster stays tight, especially now when we're all in different parts of the campus uh, with our electives, we need to make sure that we're still uh, we still have opportunities to bond and um, make everyone make sure everyone is included. Um, and actually, one of the one of my favorite uh, events that we did, which we're also doing in one of the affinity clubs I'm part of, is organize um, random dinners. We call them. So we pair about five people together without then without them knowing in advance who will be the other four people. And we tell them which restaurant to go to, and then um, they go and find out who they, who it is. And I think it's a great opportunity to um, get to know better some people from your cluster without necessarily um, struggling to find a way to do so. It's all organized for you, um, and it helped us a lot. Um, I'm also um, part of the Middle East and North Africa Club, which is an affinity club. And um, what we're trying to do, I'm also on the board of it. So what we're trying to do now is um, focus more on helping people recruit because now it's the recruiting season. And actually a lot of people, not only from the MENA region, but also from different parts of the world are trying to find jobs in the MENA area. Um, there's a lot of opportunities now, especially for example, in the UAE. So we're helping companies uh, reach out to people. We're helping uh, to pair people together to uh, case for consulting interviews, for example, or have coffee chats. So we're trying to really broaden our um, our impact on uh, the members of the club. And this has been a great opportunity. Another club that I'm part of is um, the Family Business Club. And they did, uh, I think they do like one big event per semester uh, where they bring together multiple founders of family businesses. And this has been great because they've also, they've also been from different industries and parts of the world. And um, I got to learn a lot. So it was a very nice event. Um, I'm also part of the Gourmet Club and other fun clubs where you always have um, nice activities to fill your weekends with. Um, but I think the ones I mentioned are the ones that um, I'm the most passionate about. Amazing. Thank you so much. You both sound very busy, <laughs> lots going on. And I think that really speaks to just the the joy that students find in getting involved in these different clubs. You know, students on average are involved, excuse me, with like five to seven clubs um, and are leaders in one to two. And that's the average, right? And you can hear from just Michael and Talia's perspective um, that that's definitely the case. Students are really taking advantage of all of these different offerings on campus. Um, so thank you so much for sharing all of that. I next want to dive into engaging with the broader community. I We discussed a little bit about how we as CBS students um, and CBS staff, faculty are kind of affiliated with the New York City community as a whole. But I want to dive a little bit into specifically talking about the Manhattanville and Harlem community. Um, this picture specifically is from our Manhattanville Community Day, which is open to folks from all across the community to come. Um, there are local vendors who will come and sell on campus. Um, they had, I know they had like an independent film festival with Harlem filmmakers in the most recent Manhattanville Community Day. So there's always a lot of really cool stuff going on there. Um, and Columbia in general is really dedicated to connecting with the larger Harlem community. Um, the Columbia Harlem Small Business Development Center is one of my favorite areas to reference. Um, they launched in 2009 and since then have helped contribute to the creation of over 5,500 jobs in the Harlem community. Um, the campus itself is, like I mentioned, it's two buildings with a quad in between and it's open to the whole community, right? So during the summer, a lot of the time you'll see, there's like a splash pad. So you'll see kids coming and playing, riding their bikes. Um, so CBS really is making a significant effort to become a larger component in the Harlem community and contribute where we can, um, as well as invite them to campus for a variety of different, um, invite community members to campus for a variety of different events um, as the year kind of goes on. Um, so just wanted to touch on that. Another thing that I wanted to touch on is our alumni community. So we have over 50,000 alumni worldwide. We just hit 50,000 this past year. So very exciting for our um, 2023 grads that they are now part of that 
50,000. Um, but it you can hear, and you can hear students talk about this all the time, it really is a global alumni network. And alumni are more than willing to connect with students um, on a variety of different levels, right? So um, whether that be, you know, helping connect for a job, I've heard um, students connect with alumni when they have personal questions about living in New York, right? There are so many different ways that the alumni take advantage um, of the Columbia Business School um, opportunities post-graduation and really like to pay it forward. I know Michael mentioned that pay it forward culture is a really big component of the CBS experience overall. Um, and the alumni are really engaged in the entire life cycle of um, CBS. So just something to think about every single, you know, domestic large city, as well as international um, countries has an alumni club that students can reach out to as a current student, as an alum to get more involved um, and to help eat, both on a personal level and a professional level. So lots of really great opportunities to connect with alums there. Oh, excuse me, you can see, these are just some of the cities that have an alumni club that you can partake in. If you are um, an alumni from this area, a student from this area doing an internship in one of these areas, um, the alumni clubs are a great way to connect with folks. Um, finally, before we dive into the admission component of the presentation, we're going to talk about some different resources on campus um, and how students can take advantage of them. Um, so the first that I want to reference is the Office of Student Affairs. Um, the Office of Student Affairs is a place where I'm sure you will spend lots of time um, as a current student. This is where academic advising, this is where all the clubs student life, it all kind of lives in the Office of Student Affairs. Um, one point I want to make quickly is that, you know, when you come into CBS, you will automatically be assigned an academic advisor. So, you know, we talked a lot about the core curriculum. We talked a lot about um, the different electives that are offered. Um, and it can be rigorous, right? This is Columbia. This is not an easy path by any means, but the Office of Student Affairs does a really good job of making sure that students feel supported throughout their academic careers um, because of their different advisors that they have, different offerings. The CBS Well Initiative um, is a great way for students to make sure that they're maintaining their mental health and stability throughout their time at CBS. There's a lot going on, especially that first semester. So having OSA there to help support in different ways um, is a really great resource for students. Um, and then the next area that I'd like to focus on as a resource is the career support. The Career Management Center is a really great resource for students looking for in-semester, summer internships, post-MBA post career opportunities. Um, they offer one-on-one -on -one advising. They have alumni coaching programs. The Executives and Residence Program is really popular, very unique to CBS, an opportunity for you to connect with a C-suite level exec who may or may not be an alumni of the university who just wants to give back and connect with students and share their expertise with them, whether that be if you have questions about goals, if you have questions about your small business that you want to get off the ground, um, the Executive and Residence are a really good um, resource for students there. Um, I'd love it if, Michael, you could talk a little bit about OSA, how you've connected with them throughout your time, and then Talia, if you wouldn't mind doing the same for CMC. Um, that would be really great. Yeah, absolutely. So for the Office of Student Affairs, I think that they're a really great touch point for sort of two uh, avenues. First is like academic life and sort of managing the balance between, of course, professional pursuits, academia, and then your social life. Um, and then the other part that they're really good about is actually working with the clubs. So on the more academic side, the uh, OSA is very comprehensive. Like Mara said, the core curriculum, it can be rigorous and CBS wants to see everyone succeed, right? Um, and so one program that I took advantage of is tutoring. There's tutors, there's free tutoring for every single one of the core classes that you take and even a lot, uh, several electives that you that students are able to take as well. Um, and so like for myself, while I was recruiting and managing social life, you know, I just wanted to get more insight on accounting and corporate finance because those were something that were gonna be very tangible both in my recruiting process as well as hopefully at the time, hopefully my summer uh, internship. And so I was able to link up with uh, a tutor and she was amazing. She was a second year and she helped me with all of pretty much all of the different concepts. She was a former investment banker herself. 
And so that was just a really great opportunity um, to sort of one, learn more about the, the curriculum, about the, the content, but two, make sure that I was able to balance everything, especially having been away from school for almost seven years. Um, and so that was sort of the more academic side. On the more club and social life side, I think that OSA does a really amazing job of sort of being your guide as you're founding and generating new events for your different clubs. So for example, in um, the Veterans Club, we're actually putting together a panel that's sort of an intersectional panel between Cluster Q and the Vets Club, and it's uh, based on mental health and bringing that, bringing awareness to that and how each of our communities deals with it uniquely. And Scott Siegel is actually one of the um, representatives who leads a lot of the Affinity Club um, engagement and involvement from an OSA perspective. And he's been phenomenal in helping us get everything set up and making sure we found funding so that we have food at the event and have a space to actually have it. And so they really are the go-to to figure out pretty much everything that we're doing. Because when you get a lot of innovative, smart kids in an MBA school together, of course, we're going to have an amazing idea or several amazing ideas. And OSA is there to help you execute it every step of the way. And I can talk a bit about the career support that we have access to. So uh, the CMC is really your go-to for anything related to your career, but not just to find a job, but I think the most important part is at the beginning when you're still a bit um, unsure of exactly what path you want to take or what types of companies you want to apply to. Um, and as a J term, I found it very useful to have a few months before the recruiting season to just take time to think about really what you're passionate about and what you want to focus on. So I had multiple meetings with CMC advisors um, from Mike Lucia to uh, Diana to, I think I talked to a few of them and they really were um, an extremely helpful source to um, to really focus, uh, to give you um, ideas of which companies fit your goal and to put you in contact with alumni or second years who actually went through a very similar path as you. And um, they can even, you know, they'll give you names of people you can contact and they just make it much easier for you. And then Towards when you get closer to the recruiting season, they help you prep for your interview. Um, uh, they even, you know, they help you. I think we had the pitch interview lab where they record you um, pitching yourself as if you were talking to a recruiter. And then you get to um, look at the video and comment on it. And I found this super useful. Um, and even now, I had an interview a few weeks ago and I was able to meet with my CMC advisors right before. Um, just to touch on a few important points to make sure that I'm ready for my interview. Uh, and of course, you have all the events that the CMC organizes. Um, I think one of them recently was even how to write thank you notes. So they're really there for you at every step of the process. And it's extremely useful when you have so many things going on um, at in your experience. Um, and I also want to say that professors are actually a great resource for career support. Um, if you're taking a class in, in a topic that's really uh, close to what you're applying for, you mm -hmm. can meet with your professors at office hours. And for me, at least, there have been an incredible support as well. So all this together really makes it much easier to uh, to go through the process. Amazing. Thank you both so much for sharing that. Um, I'm now going to dive a little bit more into um, the admission component of things. First, starting out with um, institutional funding and financing your MBA. Um, we have a few different opportunities here for students to be able to finance their MBA, um, whether that be merit-based fellowships, need-based scholarships, or U.S. international student loans. Um, for students who are applying to CBS in the August timeline, if you apply in August entry rounds one and two, you are automatically considered for all merit-based fellowships, right? So you do not have to submit any additional documentation there. Um, so no worries there. For need-based scholarships, you would need to submit a need-based application form um, for all students. 
Um, and you can see here on this slide, it talks a little bit about what the different types of fellowships are, um, the scholarships, what the range is. Um, you can see that they range, the merit-based fellowships specifically will range from 20K to full tuition per year. Um, so it's, it's, there's a lot of fine, there's a lot of monies there for students to take advantage of, um, if that's something they're interested in. And I really encourage students to really think about how you're going to sponsor your MBA experience, um, early rather than later so that you know, and please don't hesitate to reach out to our financial aid office if you do have any specific questions. Okay, and now we're going to start by talking a little bit about the admission component as a whole. Um, so we are going to talk about our holistic application process. So we at CBS utilize a holistic review of the application. We really are going to take a look at all three of these chunks of your application in order to see if you will be a good fit for CBS. Um, so you can see we look at academic strength. We're going to look at your undergraduate record, any master's programs that you've partaken in already, as well as your GMAT, GRE, or executive assessment. Um, now, we talked a lot about this throughout the presentation. Columbia Business School is a very rigorous curriculum, right? We want to make sure that you are going to be academically successful on campus. That is ultimately my number one goal as an admission officer. Um, but we know that there are a lot of different ways that we can look at this, right? So obviously the undergraduate record, your GMAT, GRE, or EA is an important part of the application, but there are so many other things that are going to give us insight into how you'll perform as a student at CBS, how you'll contribute, um, and how you'll do in the classroom, right? Um, one thing I do want to highlight before we move on from academic strength in regards to the test scores um, is we truly have no prior, no preference as to which exam you take. So I always encourage students, take a practice test for each one, um, see which one you do best on, um, and then go from there, right? So um, don't let the, the test be the thing that stresses you out to no end. Obviously, you know, do your best on the exam, but there are other components of the application that we'll be looking at as well. Um, the second thing we're going to look at is your professional promise, right? So we're going to look at your resume. Um, we're going to see kind of how you've contributed to your various roles pre-MBA. Um, so instead of just kind of turning in a list of your job just responsibilities, we have a good understanding of what that probably looks like. Really focus in on your resume on how you've contributed to your various roles, right? What about the the work that you've done is going to showcase you um, as a prospective fabulous Columbia Business School MBA student? Um, we do require one letter of recommendation um, from your current supervisor. Now, that being said, we know that there are a variety of reasons why folks may not want to turn to their current supervisor, um, but we encourage you to at least get a previous supervisor. We really want to see it from somebody who can help us connect those dots, right? You know, this person said these are the types of things they did in their role. This letter of recommendation affirms that for us, right? Um, and we only require one. So no need to go searching for a bunch of letters of recommendation. One will totally suffice. Um, there is a post MBA goal. It's like tweet length, um, very short, just kind of sharing what you're planning on doing immediately post MBA. Um, and then essay number one really falls into this component of professional promise as well. And we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about the essays on the next slide. Um, but essay number one is really talking about what your goals are, right? Um, and how you can see yourself achieving those goals and how an MBA specifically will help you reach them, right? Um, really diving into that uh, will be very helpful as you're kind of working on these different essays. Um, and then your interview. So once you apply, we will evaluate the applications and then we will invite selected students to interview. Um, and the interviews are conducted by a variety of stakeholders, whether that be an alumni ambassador, a current student, or an admission officer, really to just get to know you better off paper, right? We've had the opportunity to get to know you from your resume. Um, now we want to get to know you in person, right? So the interview gives us the opportunity to learn a little bit more about your professional background, but also swinging into the final bucket, um, your personal characteristics as well, right? You know, there's only so much a piece of paper can tell us. Getting to chat with you in person will really give us an idea um, of how you can contribute to the CBS community. 
Um, in addition to the interview for the personal characteristics, we're going to look at your extracurricular activities, um, the commitment to the honor code, and essays number two and three. So now that we've talked through those three components of what we're really evaluating when looking at students for the MBA program, I'll go ahead and dive a little bit more in depth into these different essay questions. Um, so you can see essay number one, we talked a little bit about it already, but it's really focusing on what are your career goals over the next three to five years, and what is your long-term dream job, and how is an MBA going to help you reach those goals, right? So for us, as we're evaluating these app, as we're evaluating applications, it's important for us to see um, what you plan to do to reach those goals, and how an MBA and how CDS is going to help you get there. Um, the second question is focusing on the Phillips Pathway for Inclusive Leadership, which I discussed a little bit earlier in the presentation. Um, and there are five inclusive leadership skills that they highlight. And we want to hear about a time where you navigated one of these skills, um, how you utilized it, and the actions you took for the skill, and what the outcome was. So um, there's no wrong answers to this question. I always encourage students to, you know, really spend some time on all the essay questions, of course, but um, on essay number two, reflecting on your experiences as a person navigating the business world and what that looks like in regards to these five inclusive leadership skills slash pillars, right? So um, really dive into essay number two. Again, no wrong answers. And I always encourage students to never feel like they have to share something they feel uncomfortable sharing, right? So um, you know, never feel like you have to do that. This is really just an opportunity for us to get to know you on a more personal level. And then number three is why CDS, right? This is really your opportunity to talk about why Columbia Business School is the right fit for you, right? So this is where your research really comes into play. So, you know, attending events like this, um, you know, watching recorded events, going to in-person events in your region, whatever it may be, how have you learned about CDS? What have you learned? And why do you feel like it's a good fit for you academically, culturally, professionally, right? Be as specific as you can here. This is really your opportunity to showcase I am meant for CVS and CVS is meant for me. And this is why, right? So have fun with this one. I always say that this is where proofreading comes into account the most, right? Um, if someone says they're really excited about CSB, I'm like, I'm sure that's a great school, but I don't know where that is. Um, and obviously that's not going to make me, you know, automatically deny or anything, right? But we really want to see students who are excited about Columbia, excited to share why they feel like Columbia Business School is a good fit for them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So next, what we're going to talk about is our deadlines, the timeline, whether you're applying to CBS directly through CBS or through the consortium. So I discussed the consortium a little bit earlier in the presentation as well, but just a reminder, the consortium is a program dedicated to promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion within full-time MBA programs. Um, so they have their, it works it works kind of similarly to how the common application works for undergrad, if you're familiar with that. So you can apply to up to five MBA programs through the consortium. Um, you do have to be a U.S. citizen or U.S. permanent resident to apply through the consortium, but there are no other qualifications. There are two additional essay questions that are involved with this. So just something to keep in mind as you're continuing to navigate how you're going to um, um, embark on this MBA journey. Um, but you can see their timelines align pretty well with our timelines, right? Um, so our January entry for dry, applying directly to CDS, um, we still are evaluating applications on a rolling basis. Um, so, you know, that means obviously try to apply earlier in the timeline if you can. Um, that way you can find out earlier and the pool will obviously be smaller. Whereas now that we've transitioned to rounds for August entry, um, you have until the day of the deadline to apply to that specific round. So, for example, August entry round one, you can apply as long as you have applied by September 13th, you will automatically be considered in that round one timeline by January 5th, round two, by April 3rd, round three, right? Um, so I encourage students to really apply when they feel that their application is the strongest, right? Um, you know, if you are rushing to get everything together by the round one deadline, which does serve as our technical priority deadline, um, but you, by September 12th, they're like, I just don't feel confident with my essays, apply round two, right? 
ultimately, whenever your application is the strongest is when you will have the best chance of admittance. Um, the only caveat I will say, and I mentioned this earlier as well, August entry round one and round two, you will automatically be considered for merit-based fellowships, whereas August entry round three, you will not. There will not be any merit-based fellowships available. That being said, need-based scholarships are open to all students. And you can see through the consortium, their early deadline aligns somewhat with our August entry round one. So if you apply early through the consortium, you will be considered in our round one deadline, our interview timeline, all of that. And then you can see their final deadline aligns exactly with our round two deadline. Um, so you will be considered for merit-based fellowships, all of that. And you'll be kind of in consideration with the students who applied directly to round two through CBS. Um, so just something to think about. Um, I Again, my any big takeaway you take away from this is I really encourage students to apply when they feel their application will be the strongest. So just something to think about. Um, you can see here just a little bit on the timeline, the application deadline, when the interview decisions will be released, and then when the final decisions will be released. So, um, you know, we don't have, we don't release specific dates for our interview decisions or our final decisions to be released, but you can see that for August entry round one, interviews will start being released mid-October, final decisions will be released mid-December, the round two will be a January 5th deadline, early to mid-February for interviews, late March for final decisions, August entry round three, early April for the deadline, mid to late April for interview decisions, and then the final decisions will be released in early May. Um, so I encourage you all to take a screenshot mentally or physically of this slide um, because this will be really helpful as you continue to know. Us. Um, we do have a variety of other programs that we offer. This pro this um, presentation was obviously kind of specifically focused on the full-time MBA experience, um, but we have our deferred enrollment program, our three-year JD MBA, our MBA XMS program, as well as our various executive MBA programs um, and our executive MBA global program that do have slightly different deadlines. Um, a lot of the application components are similar to that of the full-time MBA. They may vary slightly. Um, so I'd encourage you to take a look at their specific resources. All of these programs have information sessions that they host that talk in more depth about their timelines and their application process in general. Um, but I would encourage you to you know, keep this in mind as you're navigating this process um, if you're interested in one of the other applications. So thank you all so much. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to Q&A now. Um, but before we do that, I do just want to remind you, if you have any specific questions that we're unable to get to today, you're more than welcome to utilize um, our apply email. Send us an email at any time asking us questions. Our office is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 4. So feel free to swing by, um, chat with one of our admissions specialists, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, but thank you all again. And so we'll just go ahead and utilize the Q&A box for the chat. Thank you.